Australia, the smallest continent and one of the largest countries on earth. We will hunt here in the Northern Territories and the waters of coastal canals and billabongs in the promised land of the Aborigines. In the company of Dylan, the son of one of the elders. I just made my first spear, I think I was about 10 years old. He is like a man here. Spearing fish, well, hunting for meat. I love it when a plan comes together. I just love bow hunting in the Northern Territory of Australia. And this is why. We are here on a wild boar hunt in chase of deer and buffalo. Our hunting grounds are the islands and coastal mangroves of the Coral Sea. We will survive only if we are tough, inventive and dead-eyed. The sea keeps an abundant food source for each predator around here. There will be dinner for us too if we can catch it. Welcome to this exciting hunt among the wild inhabitants of the wildest part of Australia. Outback Pursuits. What did you think of the what did you think of the bow? You got to see the shot actually. What did you think of that? That was good. That was very good watching the bow. Like seeing that. Our, of course we've got spears and you guys hunt with bow. It's pretty pretty unique seeing something like that. Have you, have you ever seen a bow hunter shoot a bantang before? I've seen a bow hunter, but this one was pretty special having someone like Tom Randa come out. Very special coming out and getting a finally getting a bantang witnessing it. Well you did a great job. I mean your eyesight's just incredible how you can spot spot stuff. I, I, I need three pairs of binoculars to see what you see with your naked eye for crying out loud. Yeah we was always taught in the bush always use your eyes. You know, don't look what's right there. You always try and look beyond what you see. Just amazing how close he was when we first spotted him. They can camouflage themselves so well in that third country. It's, it's just incredible. He was a 50 yards when we first spotted him, so uh, we did well. So we shot him in your old backyard, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Super job, man. What a what a fantastic. I mean, you've been spearing fish for us. You've been tracking barefoot. I mean, that's oh it. my that's goodness, the way to do it. that's the way you do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, these guys are amazing. It's just incredible. Uh, I don't know what to say except thank you so much for just an awesome experience and a very special part of Australia. A part that very, very few people ever get to experience. And the few that are allowed in here to experience it, I think they leave with a little special mark on their heart for the area. And, for, and, and their soul has been touched, because mine sure has. Take a big Bantang bull like this, uh, in a special place like this, just amazing. Totally Fantastic, great, great job, you guys. You. Just pleasure. awesome to be Thank with you. both of you. Yep. I just love bow hunting in the Northern Territory of Australia. And this is why. One of the funnest hunts that you can do spot and stalk is for wild boars. Here in the Northern Territory of Australia, there's a lot of wild boars and it can be fun and exciting to hunt. Yep. Right, right. It's heavier than what it looks, eh? Hey. In addition to the head and skin, we had taken the more fragile meat parts. We were about to have a tasty dish, prepared from game meat and roasted root vegetables for dinner once again. The feast was about to continue late in the evening, and the occasion? Tom's success. After the others got tired from the party and went to bed, we prepared to visit the canal. Yeah, we're going to one of the creeks. Check the crab pot. Hope we get some barrel. But it won't be. There's a really good chance we'll catch a snake too, Vlado. We should we should be able to find some snakes tonight. Yeah, black out of python, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, black out. Yeah. Yeah. Serious. Where's the watch for them? While we were moving in the darkness, many wild inhabitants were set into motion in front of the headlights that we could barely see at daytime. This evening, we were about to get the chance of comparing the effectiveness of Ben's modern bow 
and Dylan's handmade spear. Both wanted to catch Baramundi, or whatever showed up from the depth of night. Oh, fucking barrel. Get this fucking bow. How big is he? Good size. Where's the croc from? I don't know, but he made no mud, eh? No. Sneaky fucker. His eyes were a fair way apart, mate. Good size, eh? Yeah. Oh, there's a barrel. See the barrel, Vlado? Mm. Yeah. See his eyes? There he is, see? Crop. Today, the competition between bow and spear was a total failure because of the absence of large barramundi. That is why we decided to get back and catch our sleep, but not before checking the crab traps. We have nothing in here as well. I guess the giant crocodile ate or chased all the living creatures in the canal. Sometimes for wild boar hunting you get up real early in the morning because you want to get out there at daybreak. If you get out there at daybreak a lot of times these boars are feeding and here in the Northern Territory we found that the middle of the day is just so hot the boars are laid up and they're hard to get on. I mean it's so crunchy in the woods they hear you coming and they bolt before you get the opportunity to even see them. But if you can catch them early in the morning or late in the evening feeding you'll see them out and that'll give you the opportunity to get the wind right and do a stalk come out for an early start. We're gonna use these headlamps to get into the swamp. These pigs, it's just so warm here. These pigs are bedding up 10, 30, 11 o'clock and uh, getting a chance for a good afternoon hunt is just impossible. So we gotta get in there early, try to catch them out feeding. Uh, it's quite a walk in, a couple, three kilometers to walk into the swamp. So we're gonna leave in the dark. See if we can't get us on a really nice Australian boar.
the game trail that was accidentally meandering in our direction proved full of fresh traces left by all possible animal species, including bantang, buffalo, and wild boar. We were sharp at the marsh edge to enjoy for a while the beautiful Australian sunrise. The sun rays seemed to wake up a vast living organism and all kinds of sounds flew above the golden mirror. At some places, we had to move through canals and billabongs. Some of them were inhabited by crocodiles, stalking their breakfast for sure. It seems that fires here never really stop, and they just needed wind gusts to continue their fervent life. buffalo steps that were going towards the water, yet never coming back. It seemed something drew and dragged it along the soft mud. Never come back. <laughs> After this insight, we started choosing the movement direction further from the water. the wind got more robust, and we were seriously worried about the fire flames brought to life in the forest behind us. Should a fire cut our way back, we had to make a massive trek to get out of here. And the scars onto the huge trunks, crushed like straws, were telling about the wind we would not like to imagine. The bold birds that have dared to take off the land got literally carried away with a speed of hundreds of meters per second. Most birds have concealed amidst the papyruses or in the shallow waters, yet some never fly. These black, secretive creatures are one of the most ancient here. Later on, we were about to discover their incredible achievements on Earth or under it.
The first boar that we encountered in the opening proved the other side of a strait. We had to travel a vast distance to establish a suitable shooting location and the right opposite wind. The boar was so busy looking for roots that it didn't sense three big guys like us approaching. We get the unique chance of coming even more. This time, the boar was at the site of two bow hunters. It seems the boar was luckier than all three of us at the time. not a good way to get an Australian wild boar. It was my first ever stalk. We played it out perfect. We were on the other side of the swamp. We saw him. We worked all the way around to get the wind right, which is quite a hike. It took us a while to get over here. We got over here, got set up. I got to 38 yards. He was kind of quartered toward me, so I had to wait a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. Finally, he kind of moved a little bit, got to a more broadside shot. He was 38 yards, full draw let it go and it flew straight over his back startled him he just come out of there real quick and then cut across I was able to grab another arrow out of my quiver re-knock adjust my sight to 30 yards and shot over his back again two misses on one pig you know what that's bow hunting 
know, a lot of times it gets a little bit breezy. You're kind of guessing the yardage. I mean, I had the yardage tack for that. I know I shot over them. Here I didn't know, I just guessed. And still, I just shot a little bit high. Lucky there's a lot of pigs in Australia. We're gonna hopefully get another chance. These are flowers. Pretty cool. They're really poisonous. Dylan drove us and left us on the road. We started the afternoon hunt relatively early, yet we wanted to be on time by the marsh to catch Boar's evening outing. The fearful roots of the trees, uprooted by the hurricane, were the best witness of natural elements force that raged here. Horrific cyclones and tornadoes are frequent guests here, and the wind force could vary from 160 to 380 kilometers per hour. We hoped we would not get into such a natural element. In Australia, there is an enormous number of different spider species, and some of them are lethal even for a human. Interestingly, in natural cataclysms and floods, they use their light spider webs as airborne vessels and fly away from the flooded areas. Other representatives of the predator arthropods build huge galleries made of spider webs. They catch more giant butterflies and even birds. The terrifying night hunters select places close to fruit trees or shrubs that attract butterflies and small birds. So they fell victim to the strong jaws of black creatures. While we were walking around the stagnant waters, we saw many different bird species. They had registered nearly 900 bird species in Australia, whereas only around 200 of them are aliens. Here, we have birds with sizes from eight centimeters to the huge non-flying emu. Some birds have unique behavioral features typical to this continent. For example, the firehawks, to people's greatest amazement, purposefully and in groups, carry burning twigs in their beaks and nails and start fires. The firebirds gather in flocks along the fire border lines, enter in the burning regions while taking burning straws and sticks and carry them at huge distances of several hundred meters. Then they throw them and start new fires. Some scientists believe that hawks control the runway of their victims. They get in the burning trap. Aborigines are well aware of this behavior for centuries. Other birds build huge nests beneath the earth to hide from the possible fires. This is the nest of a jungle fowl, we also call them scrub hens. That's been made by those birds that we've been seeing down in the underbrush cruising around. That's tons and tons and tons of material that's been pulled together like that. And that one's probably ancient, that could be hundreds if not thousands of years old. It's quite amazing that bird can it's something so huge. It's the biggest bird nest you've ever seen, I'm sure. Absolutely. Crazy. It's, it is crazy. What kind of bird is this? Jungle fowl. You know, Jungle? You know the ones we saw this morning? Video, remember, with the blue legs? There's always two. Really? Yeah. This kind of stuff? Yeah. So for many generations, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably thousands of years old, yeah. Totally different day to day, too. With the Hot weather. No Cassowary. Wind. This is the name of the bird nice architect launch. of the gigantic nest. In addition to the title, from the internet we learned something else. A human was killed recently by one of these birds, and its nickname is Bird Killer.
After we saw so many and versatile, inexplicable natural phenomena and intellect manifestations by the wild animals and plants here in the outback, I was no longer surprised that Aborigines' beliefs and spiritual traditions are based on nature.
much. You're more than welcome, mate. It's just sending a shiver down my spine, actually. This guy's, <laughs> this guy's amazing. Ben, uh, just a phenomenal hunter, young guy coming up, big time. I wish I knew half of what he knows when I was his age, that's for sure. Pretty exciting here in Australia, I'll tell you what, these are big boars. That's my, I think, my first one. You don't count your chickens till they're hatched, but I'm thinking that uh, we really put the, put the Rage Two Blade Extreme in the boiler room or the Rage in the cage. <laughs> We'll give him a few minutes. Thank you so much. No worries, mate. We worked hard for that. We've we really worked did. hard, yeah. We really did. Yeah, I'm so glad to see a perfect stalk, perfect shot. I'm so happy for you, mate. That was awesome to watch. Good stuff. <laughs> it's, you know what time it is? It's not even 10 o'clock yet. <laughs> so we've got heaps of time. Yesterday I was just waking up. Mate, I'm so stoked for you. <laughs> Isn't that just... Thanks for being here for both the kills. Well, three kills. Yeah. I had to, even had to take an extra shot of the proverbial. Someone's looking out for us today because we've just walked several <sighs> kilometers along this swamp. That's probably like five kilometers. I don't know how far we've walked, but I saw a sign back there that said Darwin, five miles. <laughs> We're probably close now, yeah. We're probably close. <laughs> we've done some walking and this has been a hot day, a hard day. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a, it's it's been hard work, and then we're gifted with that ball right at the end of the swamp, just when we're about to walk, walk back to camp. That's just uh, that's what it's all about, mate. Walk, working hard and um, getting the results. So stoked. Didn't get any better. Didn't get any better. <laughs> that beer's gonna taste good back in camp. Mate. He's hey, gonna be. It's adventure bow hunting. Going to a place you've never been, hunting an animal you've never seen. We've all seen a lot of hogs, but not in Australia. Not in the Northern Territory. Not in the outback. I think that was a pretty nice one too, so we'll see how it goes. It's a really gnarly looking ball. Blood. A lot of blood under the bushes. Phenomenal blood trail. We've got both ends of the arrow here broke off. These boars are tough now. The two blade rage extreme is not going to go over 100 yards for sure. In this blood. Oh, well, there he is. <laughs> just see him. Ben just found him. <laughs> Wild boar, baby. <laughs> nice work, mate. Thank you very much. Good on you. Let's check him out. Let's check him out. how big that is <laughs> that's a giant I just hope the other one's there on the other side he is a giant boar my god mate <laughs> that is a crack <laughs> well done <laughs> oh my god wow that is a huge tusker mate oh my god it's just a muddy muddy and bloody right now give us a chance to clean him up and we'll we'll be right back and that's exactly how my hunt went down we got up real early. We walked in about three kilometers to this billabong and we started working around the edge, slow and easy, looking, glassing. We weren't seeing a lot. We've seen a lot of tracks and a lot of sign and a lot of diggings, but we weren't seeing a lot of boars until finally we spot this boar. Really nice one. And he's got his head in basically up to his ears in this billabong. He's digging and eating and digging and eating. 
the perfect scenario. We had good wind. Normally I like to stay in the shade, but the situation called for me to be able to get the wind perfect to swing out actually into the swamp itself and come around to make sure that the wind was going to be perfect on him when I got close. And I was able to sneak into 30 yards behind a tree and he was actually facing me, but he was his head was down the whole time, so it was pretty easy to sneak on him. Once I got in position, I just had to wait and wait and wait for the opportunity. And the opportunity was that he needed to turn broadside. When he turned broadside, I was able to kneel, draw my bow, and make the shot. Pretty exciting hunt. He'd very likely be in the top 10 of all time. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> Wild boar right there, all cleaned up. Look at this, Australian Outback, wild boar. What a fantastic hunt. You know, anytime you can go somewhere you've never been and hunt an animal you've never seen, it's adventure bow hunting. What a fantastic hunt. You know, when you're on the ground eye to eye, there's nothing like it. And when you can slip on slide on these animals and you can come around and get in range and get the full draw and they don't know you're there, that's what bow hunting's all about. It's about getting close, getting in there, and getting it done. This big boar took a two-blade rage extreme and ran about 65, 75 yards and piled up right here. We cleaned him up a little bit. Look at those tusks. Unreal. Gigantic. But one of the neat things about this trip for me has been just all the neat Australian bow hunters I've met. I had an opportunity to go to the actual bow hunter banquet and I met so many down to earth and interesting Aussies that love bow hunting as much as I do. And to get an opportunity to get out here on the floodplain and stalk these giant teeth wild boars is just amazing. Especially when I got a guide like like Ben to help me get get the job done. Ben, come over here, buddy. <laughs> well Thanks done, so mate. much, man. Get in here. What a beauty. I'm so happy for you. This is just exactly what we've been looking for. We've worked really hard. We've done some big Ks. A lot of mosquitoes and mangroves and mud, and it's been pretty tough. It's been hot, but he got it done, and he's a beautiful trophy. Those tusks are just incredible, particularly on that side. He's just gigantic. You can see his ears are completely ripped up. Yep. That's most likely from dingoes attacking him over his over his life. He's definitely an old boar, probably about 100 kilograms, and this is just what it's all about. This is exactly what we target here in Australia. Perfect boar. So happy for you, mate. Well done. I really appreciate it, man. It's been a, been an awesome experience, and for you to take a, a solid week out of your busy schedule to come out here and uh, chum around with an old TV boy like me, I appreciate it. It's been awesome. It's been a great time. We've had fun, haven't we? Absolutely. It's been a great week, mate. You're welcome anytime. I actually met Ben in Bulgaria on the fallow deer hunt. And uh, he said, let's go come to Australia. Come to Australia. We'll do something. And here I am. And that's what we did. So it, uh, I love it when a plan comes together. That's what adventure bow hunting is all about. Thank you so much, man. No worries, mate. You're Appreciate welcome. Appreciate it. Ben and Tom's adventures continue in the next episode of Outback Pursuits. Do not miss it. You know what's coming next. Survive the elements and bag the big prize. Hunting and fishing have been around since the beginning of time, but now you can be a part of it from anywhere with Safari Channel. Safari Channel is the first outdoor network to offer a 4K visual experience with reality shows from around the world. Safari Channel is a brand new way for hunters to watch their favorite shows. The channel offers immersive, real-life experiences in 4K and adrenaline-filled hunting adventures of all kinds. Endless types of hunts like wild boar in Europe, dangerous big game chases in Africa, close encounters with the deadliest animals in North America, and other hair-raising hunting and fishing shows with new episodes every week. The best hunters and outfitters in the world offer you an unforgettable experience. Join us every week for new episodes of this exciting series and get ready 
for the most adrenaline-filled hunt of your life. From tracking bears in Alaska to uncovering exotic animals in Africa, we've got you covered. Tune in every week or sign up to become a member of the Safari YouTube channel for the latest catch. Safari Channel, home to the most exciting episodes of wild boar hunting, animal tracking, and safari adventures. You won't find anything like it anywhere else.